hand to these characters is that they can cover a wide variety of film genres just by their personalities. You got romance with Pepe Le Pew, westerns and other time periods with Yosemite Sam, nature documentaries with the Tasmanian Devil, foreign flicks with Speedy Gonzales, and the rest are pretty much covered by Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. However, in this case, there would be no escaping the Looney Tunes to go into sci-fi. With all the comedic possibilities with alien technology and outer space, not even the sky can be the limit. And that is exactly why there must be a Looney Tunes character that is the representative of everything that is not from Earth. I'm talking, of course, about Marvin the Martian. Out of all the rivals Bugs had to face, Marvin is probably the most dangerous out of all of them, simply because he's looking to destroy the entire planet. Why? Oh, uh, I'm going to blow it up. It obstructs my view of Venus. But even with such a huge goal, he's not as bombastic as Yosemite Sam or slow-witted as Elmer Fudd. He has the brains with all his weapons and technology at his disposal and can keep his cool even when he gets mad, complete with a sophisticated use of his vocabulary. Now for his origins, allow me to bring you back to a special time in the late 40s, back when people had a strange fascination with the world outside of their own and maybe visiting there too. Comics, radio, and other forms of media were going into the themes of outer space, cool rockets, and alien invaders. On top of that, since the Cold War began, people also gained an interest into radiation and the weird ways it could transform people. This gave Chuck Jones a crazy idea to create a character based on all of those fears, and thus came the little man from the Red Planet himself, Commander Flying Saucer X2 aka Marvin, sporting some fancy sneakers and Roman attire inspired by the god, well, Mars. The first time that Marvin showed up was in Hair Devil Hair on July 24th, 1948, complete with his dog assistant K9 and signature weapon, the Iranian PL-36 Explosive Space Modulator. Whoa, 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 uh, do you mind just playing that again? The Iranian PL-36 Explosive Space Modulator. Yeesh! <laughs> Not really the most suited voice for him now, is it? Anyways, after his voice became how we all remember him today in the 50s, very surprisingly enough, Marvin only appeared in five cartoons during the Golden Era, including the 1951 The Hasty Hair, the 1958 Hairway to the Stars, and the 1963 Mad as a Mars Hair all of which directed by Chuck Jones and has the Martian facing Bugs Bunny. The only exception where he wasn't with Bugs was in 1953 where he had to fight against Daffy Duck and Porky Pig on Planet X in his most famous cartoon, Duck Dodgers and the 24th and a Half Century. Oddly enough though, from Hairway to the Stars onward, the color of his armor had a sudden change, going from the traditional green and red to bronze and light green. In terms of the backgrounds, since the cartoons with the Martian were set in space, this gave artist Maurice Noble the perfect opportunity to use the abstract graphic design of that time in order to create this out of this world environment. Afterwards though, Marvin had to settle as just a minor villain to give more room for Bugs other foes like Sam, Taz and Elmer during the days of the Bugs Bunny show. It wouldn't be until 1977 when the public's interest in space grew once again, this time thanks to the popularity of Star Wars. Because of this, the fame of Marvin grew bigger than ever before. Chuck Jones even brought him back in two additional cartoons for some TV specials in 1980, including Duck Dodgers and the Return of the 24th and a Half Century, and Spaced Out Bunny. And surprisingly enough, during that time, he was finally given his name. Like other Looney Tunes characters, he would be given many appearances in TV shows, animated shorts, and games, but he would be provided with a much bigger role than most other characters as a villain. He would be the referee in Space Jam, one of the main villains in Looney Tunes Back in Action, a regular rival character in the TV series Duck Dodgers working for Queen Tyranny, and starring alongside Daffy in the 3D show Marvin the Martian in the Third Dimension. 
This is not even mentioning how a variety of voice actors stepped in to lend his voice after Mel Blanc, including Joe Alasky, Rob Paulson, Maurice LaMarche, Bob Bergen, and many more. Nowadays, Morvan would be recognized as an icon, appearing as the mascot for both the USCGC Hornbeam and NASA's very own Mars rover, Spirit. With such a huge legacy on Earth, how he just wants to blow it up is rather surprising. Even if we block Venus from his path, all we're doing is just show our love for our favorite Martian. Well, sometimes. Well, back to the old drawing board. See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya later, dude!